For the last few years, I've been daily driving a Tesla, but that all might change after my latest car purchase. My first Tesla daily was a wrecked P85D that I rebuilt in my garage with my friends, Sam and Rich. I drove it for two years and then I sold it to another friend, Matt from Warped Perception. And naturally, Matt installed rockets on the back of the car. I mean, who wouldn't? After that, I bought a blue P100D with ludicrous plus mode and full self-driving. And of course, I raced my old rocket Tesla and I've been daily driving the blue one ever since. And by the way, I've won a few of those races. The P100D has been great and I love that car, but it's been almost two years and when Hoovy told me he wanted to sell his red CTSV wagon and Wizard gave it his blessings after he inspected it, I had to pull the trigger. And so I'm $30,000 lighter and in Kansas to collect my potential future daily driver. Wizard. Yes. Is this my next daily driver? Should I it be? I have a key here. Okay, that's a good start. There's an emblem on the key fob here. Ooh, it's a Cadillac. A Cadillac. A Cadillac. I bought a CTS-V wagon, of course. And this, this may be my next new daily driver. I don't know 100% yet because I'm gonna drive it back to Chicago, see if we make it and see how I feel about the car. Believe it or not, I've never driven a Gen 2 CTS-V. It's fast. Yeah? It's very fast. It has like 700 horsepower, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it has supercharger wine. Oh yes, none of my supercharged cars have a wine. Obviously, it's not electric. It's probably loud, right? It's, it is kind of loud, yes. I think we should just fire it up. Let's do it. Uh, before we start it up, we have to put my bag away. So I flew in one way, of course, and I'm gonna attempt to drive this home, but it does have some issues that we're gonna be going over here in a moment and, and we're gonna get to wrenching. But you can see how confident I am that this isn't gonna break down because I'm in all white. So anyway, Peter, Peter, Hi. are you in, you're in Kansas too? Mm -hmm. What in the world? You can live in a car, but you can't race a house. Oh, that's very true. And you brought AMS oil. Is this gonna fix our problem? I hope so. Not a lot. Peter said he'd be at a shop. I, I thought it was, you know, legit three quarters, but it's wizard shop. I like it. <laughs> so we have we have a backpack full of tools and and a Peter and a Max. We got the whole crew. <laughs> Wait a minute, does this have um yes it does. Yes. Wow, this thing was totally hit on this side. This is Hoovy's old CTSV. I bought it from him like three months ago at this point. And uh, it's been hanging out, taking up space at Wizard Shop. Thanks, thanks Wizard. Yep, no problem. <laughs> but this thing was uh, pretty wrecked. It has a rebuilt title, but yeah, the, the paint, you can kind of tell a little bit of a difference here in the color. Mm -hmm. Let's just pretend it looks exactly the same. Once we found out who was buying it, I was told not to work on it, not to fix it, leave it as yeah. is. That's what Hoovy said, so. That's right. It's all yours and all its glory and everything that's wrong as well. Hopefully it's not more broken than what Hoovy told me. I hope not as well. <laughs> Thanks for the confidence there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow, that sounds great. It sounds good, yeah. Like you, can, it's got long tube headers, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, you can hear that. See, that's that's that LS power right there. Just LS power and reliability. Uh, what are the miles? It's got low miles. Let's see. We got a right tire that's at 26 psi. We got to look at that. Wait, this has a G meter? No way. Oh. It's got a G meter. You know we got to test that. You know we have to max it out. <laughs> Peter, do you know that in 2009 when the CTSV sedan came out, yeah. that it was the fastest sedan around the Nuremberg track? No way. This is a legit handling vehicle. These have magnetic ride control, which is an amazing system. Um, and they handle really well. Although you wouldn't be able to tell that from just looking at this steering wheel. This is like such a mundane, flat, old, old looking steering wheel, but anyway. Uh, good oil pressure, 48, okay. Trans temp, nice. Where is the mileage? I have no idea. There we go, 68,000 miles. Yes. We'll have to get it under some load and warm it up. 
and we should fix some stuff on it first. But look at this, I'll admit I'm not super happy about this, but it does not have a sunroof. Most of these CTS Vs had panoramic sunroof. I love openings in the roof and sunroofs and stuff. This doesn't have it. It also doesn't have cooled seats, which is weird. And it's a non-Recaro seat car. So it does have the Alcantara in the middle, but non-Recaro seats. So this is basically kind of like a stripped out CTS V. The only option I think it has is maybe the red metallic paint and it has yellow Brembo brake calipers. My wife actually had a 2008 CTS. Uh, it was a six cylinder version before the YouTube world. So I'm kind of familiar with this whole infotainment system. The screen pops up, but yeah, this is uh, this is pretty old school at this point. But who really cares about the infotainment system when you have this, the 6.2 liter supercharged V8. This is the LSA engine. Uh, which is based off the LS9 in the Corvette ZR1. 556 factory horsepower on this guy, but this one is modified and Hoovy had it tuned and it did, uh, what did it do? Like about 550 wheel or at something, the wheel. right? At yeah, at the, the wheel. wheels, yeah. yeah. That's insane. So this is a very, very fast car. Definitely a potential legit streetcar's daily driver, that's for sure. I was a little worried about this thing being really loud, but it's it's pretty normal at idle. Like this, this is okay. It just kind of looks like a normal CTS and you don't see too many wagons in general, even the V6 model. To the everyday person, this is this is just a, a station wagon. So yeah, I believe the accident was primarily here on the driver's side, but I do think it, it went along, you know, quite a ways. Uh, this quarter panel is a different color, so it's possible this was not touched. But yeah, it looks uh, looks normal so far. I guess we'll take it out on the road and, and see, see exactly how it feels. Oh, nice. It looks like the V has brand new tires. I just got new tires for my Chevy Express van from PriorityTire.com. PriorityTire.com makes it so easy. You can search by the size if you know it, or if you don't, by vehicle. So we're gonna type in 2012 Express 3500, of course. And that's it, you're off to searching a massive selection of tires. They have everything, depending on what you're doing, and they have a ton of filters as well. So you can really fine tune this. Oh, and check this out. I have never seen a tire website do this. They offer a military discount, teacher discount, first responder, and medical staff discount. That is so cool. And you get free FedEx shipping and a 90 day money back guarantee. They also have really good customer support so you can either call or text them. These are the tires I ordered up for the van and they came in two days and you can have them shipped right to your door, set up a mobile installation where they come to you or they will ship directly to an installer of your choice. My tires were installed in an hour and what a difference they made. These tires have awesome reviews and they're super Super affordable and I gotta say I am very very impressed on how they feel if you're not driving a luxury type of car like the CTS that has a ton of padding and insulation road noise can get really annoying so the tires that were on my van they had plenty of tread life left but they were so noisy when we drove it like 800 miles home I mean aside from the transmission Moving. I think the transmission is the only thing that saved us from hearing the yeah, tires. The <laughs> tires were brutal. And so these Land Golden tires, they sound great. And they perform really well in the rain. And I gotta say, I love the tread pattern on these tires. It looks so good. Priority Tire also has a membership program. So you can save even more with that. And if you guys click on my link in the video description box or in the comments section and use coupon code LEGITPT, you're gonna save five percent so click on the link down below get your next set of tire from prioritytire.com and with that let's get back to the wagon but yeah it's all here uh it's not even dented up it needs a paint correction maybe but nothing nothing too bad oh -ho. my first time driving it this is so cool but it's not going very far. We got some work to do, people. <laughs> I gotta say, I can get the kids to soccer practice real quick in this guy. And we'll have another supercharged V8 Cadillac in the family. My wife can't be the only one. And even though the back end of this car is beautiful, the rear end of this car underneath 
is making a noise. So we're gonna have to diagnose uh, a potential bad differential. And then, you know, just hope and pray that it's good enough to make it home because we're like leaving tomorrow morning. So we have to, we don't have a new diff. All right, so this thing has a differential whine. And of course we gotta start off with some new fluid, which is back here. Hello! Ah! Another human oh. being in the back of my wagon. Roof's a little low. Hello! Yes, hello! All right. Thank you for the car. Another satisfied customer will hear back, um, which is insane. Two years later. CL65. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it took me a couple of years for that experience to wear off, and I trust you again. You with have buying cars. Bad long term memory. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, this one should go a little better, a little simpler, a little less hoopty, although it was. Bad. It's a little smash. Yeah. Yes. So dri driver side, uh -huh. side swipe. Yes. Quarter panel looks okay though. Yeah. Somehow I think they reused the front bumper. So barely touched the quarter okay. and then really dug into the doors. Somebody put it back together. They okay. did it pretty well, unlike uh, some other cars of mine. Yeah. So the story wasn't that bad. I mean, really, it's worked well other than the diff whine. Okay. I've had it tuned. It has headers on it. No cats. It sounds awesome. 550 but... wheel horsepower. Yeah. Okay. So this might be my new daily driver replacing my Model S. So kids in here and everything. So a previously salvaged car with a completely stripped interior, roof damage, hopefully no frame damage. I bought my wife a, a structurally damaged Escalade. So this is, this is right up my alley. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, they definitely ride better than the Tesla. The mag ride is my favorite part. Yes, I'm a big fan. This was a very good handling wagon. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna lift it up in the air. Hopefully we don't find any structural damage because I really do want to daily drive it. Yeah, you shouldn't. It, it's fine, but you are kind of well, trying wizard, to beat me for is... the dumbest automotive channel here a little bit. <laughs> I'm trying. You're, you're going for the mantle. <laughs> Not quite. All right, let's service this diff and, and, and then go for a ride and see, hopefully the only whine we hear is, you know, from under the hood. So before we attempt to fix the differential, we need to duplicate the concern. Well, if this... I learned anything from being a dealership technician, you have to duplicate the design. Right, you mm -hmm. can't take us on our word. Okay, so it's a whine from the rear. We hear the front whine really well. That's supposed to be there. I'm all about it. All right, so when does it do this? A little bit of acceleration or deceleration or just kind of low speed cruising. On the highway, oh. you can't hear it. Just even that little crack at the throttle. <laughs> mm hmm Yes. Okay, this isn't that bad. I haven't even heard it yet. Oh. Are you sure you didn't just fart or something? I didn't fart. Okay. They don't sound that way. Okay. <laughs> you can really get those noises to come up. It's like you get on it hard and it kind of coast, let off completely, just coast. So you're telling me I get should- Get it up to like 30, 40 miles yes, an hour? Yes, hit it. Okay, hit it is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. That's all I heard. Okay. <laughs> She's fast. Why am I selling this again? I don't know. It's done deal. Well, the wire yeah, has okay. been set. That's right. Um, it's not making the noise. It likes you. I fixed it. It likes you. This is so far such the opposite compared to the CL65. Oh, you know. And it's like 70 degrees out. It was zero. Like, yeah. And we brought nothing. We were in hoodies. Right. I don't hear it. Do you want to drive it? I can. I tend to break things. That's my specialty. All right. So this has paddle buttons. Oh, yes. Yes, are these oh, are. Oh, is that what those things are? So somebody wanted to make them a little more fancy by making it into shifters instead of buttons, but they don't work worth a damn. And the buttons are gone. From the factory, they're, they're basically the little buttons. black, yeah, yeah, they're buttons. Okay, mm -hmm. well, do they work? Oh, it works. They work, yep. You're gonna have to find buttons again, or hey, I yeah. didn't have to heart to super glue, which is what this is wanting. Oh, this is kind of cool with the open buttons. Eh? This would be a really, really nice daily driver. Yes. I, I think the kids would like it. Yes, you just stop for gas a lot. Yeah, these aren't the best. Coming from the Tesla, it's be quite different. All right, we're gonna switch this up a little bit because I cannot get it to make the noise, but I also haven't driven this car. All right, let's see if Tyler can break this car. Mm -hmm. I'm confident that he can. I'm very good at it. Listen, Tyler, the only whine I'm hearing is from under the hood. Yeah. <laughs> These things are fast. Yes. Screams. <laughs> They're really. Screams. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There it is. Oh. 
There it is. Gotta get it right in the right spot. Sometimes it does it more than others. It's trying. I heard it. It, it, it does. It does exist. And it's sort of the more you drive it, the louder it gets. Like the fluid gets warmed yes. up and thinner, yeah, yeah. and then it starts whining. I think we can fix this with fluid. If and you a can, little, and a little additive. If you can, I'm gonna be quite pissed because then I could have sold it for ten grand more. Well, I did. I, I paid you one penny more than you paid. I, for it, so. Okay. You yes. Know, it's kind I'm, of like a tip. That is true. I'm not allowed to make money yeah. on the cars for some reason. I've imposed that upon myself because I'm an idiot. I gotta say, uh, you didn't need to tell me about that. Oh, so I should have just not disclosed it to a fully used car dealer? <laughs> Most people would not have said a word. It gets a little louder. Okay. I promise you it does get louder. All right. Well, we'll have like a 800 mile or 700 mile trip back home or whatever it is to Chicago. But I think we're going to fix it right now at Wizard Shop for about $20. It does whine from both ends. It does. It's a whiner. Okay. So pulling it onto the lift? Yes. Yes. We're ready to fix it. All right. I would offer to help, but you sure don't want me to. <sighs> I do want to make it back, you know, that would be yeah. nice. All right, that wine is not bad at all. This repair should only take a few minutes. Let me know what you guys think. This is a rebuilt title, 2012 CTS V with 68,000 miles. That seems to have really no issues. And I paid $30,000. Tyler paid $29.99.99, and I gave him a one penny tip. So let me know in the comments, is this a good price? These things go for a lot more clean title, especially manuals. I've seen them for like 70 grand, but. 30 grand and I don't have to feel bad daily driving the car because it's a rebuilt title car. So who cares? One of the best looking front ends, love this. All right, I cannot work on a car with this white hoodie. This is the car show hoodie. Oh, and I can't also work on the car with my awesome white Grand National t-shirt. If only legitstreetcars.com had black apparel too. There we go. Now I'm ready to work. Before we get to the service, let's do a little inspection. Uh, so we got brand new tires all the way around. Doesn't look like any uneven wear yet. And uh, this is the side it was hit on. So let's look at this area, see what we can find as far as potential structure issues. This looks kind of crusty and nice. Dirty, like it's- Like dirty, yeah. I don't know where this car is originally from, but uh, you know, this is all aftermarket exhaust. It has headers and then, yeah, it's got headers and pipes. Yeah, it's basically straight piped into factory mufflers. And there really isn't any rust. Like there's no surface rust, there's nothing. And on this cheaper exhaust pipe, you would see that for sure if it was a Midwest type of car. This is cat and cats. I guess if you write the word cat on the pipe, it's there, <laughs> Peter. All yeah, right? yeah. That pipe identifies it, it, as a catalytic it, converter. That has definitely been self-identified as a cat. <laughs> so this is nice to see. I mean, this is definitely a car that was never driven in salt or any bad weather, and this side looks exactly the same as this side. So I don't think this is structural. Tyler says both the doors were replaced on the car. Then the plastic side skirt was white, so that was replaced. But we don't think the quarter panel was touched uh, or the front bumper. So I think it was just kind of possibly T-boned or something. 6L90E transmission, this is a monster. Guys have gone nine seconds and a quarter mile with totally stock transmissions. Um, and then Tyler had the oil changed at the dealer and they had a bad run of AC Delco oil filters. So it was leaking oil. He already threw one in a new oil filter for me. Uh, so I thought we were gonna have to replace that, but we don't. Uh, other than that, it's bone dry. It's beautiful. No leaks from the rack and pinion. The boots look good. We're just going over checking the ball joints and so far so good. Mag ride struts look to be original, but not leaking. Oh, these are nice and tight. Nice, and these are definitely painted yellow calipers. They look to have been silver originally. And then here's our very, very old and used car salesman right oh. here. He's got a lot of miles yes, on him, but it's, yeah, it's, video video. it's video inception. Finally, you've showed up to get this thing. <laughs> it's been about three months. Wizard, thank you for the storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No problem. I'll buy a dinner tonight. Did they paint over the sticker? Like, yeah, dude, they did a really bad job. <laughs> are we know? gonna are we gonna redo those? Yeah. yeah, I like the yellow. I don't think yeah. I don't think it's bad. Um, then we get the long tube headers. Looks like they had to do a little bit of clearancing right there mm. for them, and then maybe someone towed something from there. It looks like they did clearancing with like a sawzall, like not the correct. Yeah, that's not. They really wanted to get those on, <laughs> and like the parts store was closed, and yeah. it was midnight, and they're like, just whatever, get a file. <laughs> so yeah, looking back here, everything looks to be original, original patina. I don't think it was ever rear-ended. 
Uh, it's solid factory mufflers. I really like this. This is very legit street cars to do long tube headers and keep the factory mufflers. All the performance up front and kind of no fuss back here. It's kind of the opposite of a mullet, which is business up front, party in the rear. This is, it's the opposite, but. I still like it. It's a reverse mullet mobile. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Peter, I'm uh, I'm procrastinating. We need to drain this fluid. And see what we comes need out. to. Yeah, yeah. We got to <laughs> see what dumps out. We need to fix this car for twenty dollars, and then we'll just tell Tyler that it's not fixed, so you don't feel that bad. Okay. That's that's the plan. All right, you guys know the rules. One bite. One bite. You know the rules. Is that what he says? I don't know the pizza guy. Anyway, my rule is not anything to do with pizza but it has to do with opening the fill plug first. You don't wanna drain the fluid out to find out that your fill plug is frozen and then you're dead in the water in Kansas. It smells like normal diff fluid so far. Okay, whoo! All right, here we go. Ooh, Ooh yeah. That's a little glittery. That is very glittery. Mm. Yeah, what do we got here? Yeah, I mean, that doesn't look too bad, but yeah. Mm, yeah it's swirling, whirling gumdrops. Smells delicious. Yeah, it's a little metally. Can you can you give it to Dora and her friends? Dora. Here you go, Dora. <laughs> that is Dora. My daughter put it on me yesterday, and it. I thought it was gonna wash away right away, but it's it's a real tattoo for life. Dora the Explorer. Yeah, it's, a, it's a permanent tattoo. It's, I like it. <laughs> your though. daughter, your daughters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's good. I, mean, I think it'll be on there for quite some time. But anyway, all right. Yeah. The fluid's a little, a little metally. Might not have ever been changed though before. This isn't, this doesn't look horrible. It's kind of like the fluid in the magnetic ride control struts and shocks. You know what? Yeah. All right, if you just wipe the magnetic drain plug clean, it's like it never happened. There you go. Now we're gonna put her back. We'll be all right. We're gonna be okay. Okay, click, click, click. All right, so this is what's gonna fix it. Amsoil's slip lock, limited slip additive eliminates chatter. I wouldn't say we have a chatter, we have more of a whine, but either way, this stuff is amazing at reducing noises in limited slip differentials. If you haven't tried this, it's a great thing to add to your differential, even just for maintenance reasons, and some fluids don't have any of the additive in them, so you have to use this on a limited slip. You wanna hear a noise? Yes. Oh, yay. Tyler is ruining my scene here, but with, with the sound of this, it's okay. It just needs limited slip additive. Not that noise. <laughs> that is coming. Woo! See you later. Baby seat. You gotta have that. Oh, no. I'm gonna train for you guys on. Yeah, right. <laughs> you guys hear that chatter when he pushes the clutch pedal in? It's gone now? Because he's in he's in gear now? If you guys watch, there it is. If you guys watch the Talon series, that thing probably has a dual clutch, just like we do, and that's normal. Now that Tyler's done ruining our scene with the GT350H. Rude. Rude, we can get to this. Although I'm used to airplanes by the airport ruining my scene, so I guess I'll take that. All right guys, so we're just gonna put this entire four ounce, yeah, it sounds good, four ounce container in the differential. And yes, I had all this stuff shipped out to Wizard's Garage because you can't fly with more than three ounces or with more than seven inches of tools. So yeah, you guys know that from our other adventure videos. If you're gonna bring tools, make sure they're not any longer than seven inches. So if you're gonna bring extensions, bring multiple three inch extensions and so on and so forth and let the comments roll about not being able to fly with a certain amount of inches. Get to work comment Challenge. section. Challenge. <laughs> All right, and of right. course, my leash. Now this was not opened by a razor blade. That was Peter's mouth. And we're running the 75 90 weight severe gear. So again, this does have the limited slip. We didn't need that, but I kind of just like to throw it in there. It's pretty inexpensive and like, why not? And now with these Amsoil squeeze pouches, we squeeze it in. And if you guys want 25% off of all Amsoil products, there will be a link down below. You can buy them from my link. I get a tiny little commission that pays Partially for these insane trips that we take. Links down downstairs. Some, somewhere around here. It's there. Same. Oh, hey, look, I have a... But what fun is that? <laughs> Hold on, let me stab it for you. We don't know where any of Wizard's tools are, so we're just kind of winging it here. It's like going to the bathroom like there you on go. a toilet that's not yours, not your home toilet. I don't it's a little understand weird. the... 
comparison there, Peter. You feel most comfortable with your own toilet. Okay, yeah, but it's not like you can't find to- like things in the toilet. Like you know where the toilet paper is. <laughs> well, I know, be. no, no, but like going through somebody else's box is like oh. taking the dump in your grandma's house. Alex has a mobile bidet. <laughs> he does. <laughs> This, is, this, kind of, this differential fluid change is taking a turn, yeah. Peter. This is all rear end talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, as soon as it starts coming out, you're good. Differential fluid has been changed. Oh, wait. I need to get the title from Hoovy. No, well, he's gone. He just left in the Mustang and didn't give me the title. Oh, wait, what did he drive in? How did, did he, he get here? How did he get here? Hmm. We're going to have to hunt Tyler down and That's get my really title. Good. All right. So, we're going to have to test drive this potentially to Hoovy's house. To get my title, unless he's in the process right now of reporting this wagon stolen so we can get it back because we just fixed the differential for like $20. I'm washing around Dora. Don't worry. My daughter really likes this on me, so I cannot disappoint her. She just put it on yesterday, and I have to come home Are you Dora. supposed to have that thing on, on your ta- when you get a fresh tattoo? A little plastic cover. Yeah, it's like PPF. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. I did. Alex. Not if you're hardcore like me. <laughs> if you're hardcore like me, you don't have to get your, that. Your, your daughter might need to take a class or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's really hot. I'm burning right now. Ah. That's really hot? Yeah, that's hot to me. No, it's, steaming. it's steaming, Peter. It's not hot. Do you not feel pain? No. <laughs> it went with my sense of smell. Wow. I love this. This is a great height to be filling tires at. It is. Yeah. Hopefully we're not doing this on the side of the road, but we might be because this rim is cracked, and then one of the other ones is losing air. It's only at like 26 PSI. What are we at? This is 29. 29. Fantic it up, Peter. All right, this tire is done. So yeah, this one's got a little leak from the rim, and I don't really know where any of Wizard's tools are, so we're just using the Fantic. Rest of the tires were okay, and as per usual, we bring our Sonic tool bag loaded up uh, with tools and of course our tire inflator from Fantic and the T8 Max jump starter from Fantic. This thing is an absolute beast. You can start gigantic V8 engines, diesel engines with this thing over and over again. And it comes in this really cool case, super portable. You can put it just about anywhere. Both the jump starter and the tire inflator will charge other devices. You can get these guys on Amazon and I'm gonna leave you a killer code down below in the description box and the comment section. These things are absolutely amazing. I keep the tire inflator in probably half of my fleet, all of my daily drivers. They both have super bright LED lights. And bringing these with you is the difference between calling a tow truck and being stranded somewhere and simply just moving on. Like that tire might go low on our drive home and we don't care because we got the tire inflator. So check out the links down below and the coupon codes. This is limited time. And every time I mention these, they sell out within a day or two. So don't wait. Do we have a spare? Should we check the air on that one? A spare tire? Yeah. I don't know if this car has a spare tire. A lot of the AMGs don't. I don't know. Did the did Caddy hook us up with a spare? What is this, by the way? Oh, it's an extra door harness. It's exactly what you want to find in your car. <laughs> you pretty much guarantee the car's been T-boned if there's a door harness in the back. I don't know if Tyler has a dog, but someone had a dog at some point. Doesn't oh, yeah. smell like dog in here though. All right, let's see what we have here. That's a tire shaped opening. Oh yeah, do we? Oh, we got, okay, that's nice. Do we have a spare? Uh, no. What in the world is this though? It's where the spare goes. It's a subwoofer? Dude, it's a subwoofer. Oh yeah, it is. That is so cool. Wait a minute, so like, they have it held in just like a spare tire. I'm, so, is... I'm so curious, like, that, this is just a sub, isn't it? It is. Also, it looks like there's enough room to have a spare if you wanted it. Yeah, but then you'd have to get rid of the no, sub. No, no, you could put here. the sub inside the spare. It's a big wheel, right? So you're saying you can have- You can put so, los nos dos. You can what? Why not both? Oh, I thought I thought you were I thought you were going for you can have your cake and eat it too. Oh yeah, we can have our tres leches cake and eat it too. Dude, I would love to have a spare tire and a sub and cake right now. That would be amazing. This is the absolute coolest way to mount a subwoofer in a car. It's like a sleeper subwoofer because it looks like a spare. And it has an arrow that points in a certain direction. I'm not sure where it's supposed to point. I'm gonna point the arrow straight to give us maximum zero, maximum base. This is your alignment. It's my <laughs> subwoofer <laughs> tire alignment. <laughs> the tire inflator fits in anywhere, but like it was basically meant 
for the CTS-V. This is unbelievable. And then the jump starter, bam, that, that's your new home, fellas. There you go. I really like this car. And yes, I forgot this <laughs> part of it. I'm just so excited. You can do it, Alex. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is such a bad job. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's hit the road. Let's see what this differential sounds like. All right, we gotta hear the differential. That's the main goal and purpose of this test drive, Peter. All right? I'm listening. Keep listening. Keep listening. Listen to that! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hear some supercharger whine. Yeah, that's pretty good. Basically, we give it a little gas and then let off on the D cell. That's very quiet. That is very quiet. Hold on, let me give it a little bit more gas. <laughs> give it a little more here. It's just instant. Yeah. I don't hear anything. Yeah. I think we fixed it. Yes. Sorry, right. sorry, Hoofy. <laughs> I, this isn't the first time though. Like I've had chatter issues and all sorts of weird sounds be fixed by switching out the differential fluid. And that additive is awesome. All right, we are in the middle of no, we got, we are, we gotta take we're advantage. Really, we don't get yeah. this out. All right, we don't get this where we're from. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yes, dude. That's really good. <laughs> I, uh, I should have had the traction control off. It kind of kicked in on there. I don't even remember where the button is. On the steering wheel? Oh yeah, TC. Oh, uh, TC button is on the steering wheel. I, I didn't remember that. All right. We well, gotta try this again. We gotta put the differential, we gotta warm it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we're doing it's here. It's a rite of passage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, man. <laughs> okay. That was fun. No, the brakes work. The brakes work very well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's got aftermarket paddle thingies that fell off. Oh, interesting. These have like buttons from the factory. Mm. They're right here. See, look, they still work. Oh, oh, cool. All right, here we go. Traction control off. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, man. Dude, this that's thing great. Rips. <laughs> This thing rips. Oh, that's really I, good. I don't even know everything that's done to this car. I asked Tyler and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> but okay, we got long tube headers. We got an upper pulley. We got an intake box. We know it was dyno tuned. Um, we should pop the hood and explore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explore definitely. like. Dora the Explorer. <laughs> like Dora the Explorer. Okay, I don't hear anything though. Yeah, that sounds really good. I mean, we fixed this differential 100%, dude. Wow, that's awesome. It's so instant. That is really good. Awesome. I really like this car. Guys, let me know in the comment section. I like my Tesla. It's a very cool spec. It's very fast and I don't know what to do. This is obviously an older car with way less tech and, and stuff like that. But I mean, this is a nice daily, dude. This is really sweet. I daily it. A lot of room. And then I could sell the Tesla for way more than I paid for this. So I like have money back yeah. and like, you know? And suck down the dino juices. Yeah. Someone's got to use it up, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just ready whenever, it's a button. The yeah. accelerator pedal is basically an on-off switch. <laughs> it is ready to rock whenever. The trans shifts so well. I mean, it drives straight as an arrow. The brakes are phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, it's got a subwoofer. It's red. It's a wagon. Okay, yellow calipers. Yellow calipers that we're gonna have to repaint. What more can a man want? All right, let's see how much boost this thing is running. Oh gosh. <laughs> that was not all the boost. Yeah, it didn't go that high. Like it went up to like 13 PSI. That's it. We haven't even maxed out the factory gauge. Wow, all right. We gotta at least max out the factory <laughs> gauge. You know, when you spin it all the way around. Yes, I'm, I'm really thinking E85 kit. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, LSA guys, LS9 guys, let me know if I run E85 on this car, how much boost can I run? Like 18? Is 18 too much to ask for? I, I mean, it's art. It's it's a factory 
boosted car. So I would admit, I, I could see you could easily double it. Twenty six. This could be six hundred, low six hundred wheel. Oh yeah. With like zero engine work. Oh, oh yeah. Not yeah. even a cam. Mm -hmm. I know this car isn't new anymore, but we are yeah. living in the pinnacle. Yeah. Like the peak, oh, the peak. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, gasoline, yeah. internal combustion. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I mean, like you know, Hellcat's going electric. Everything's going electric. This is it, people. It's like the 60s muscle car high horsepower era with all the technology yep. to bring it fully before they all die. This time that we're in right now will forever be the most human beings could extract from internal combustion on yeah. a mass scale. Maybe in 50 years someone will figure something else out, but like we're living it right now, people. Realize the moment. The cars that we have access to right now and that are readily available, a lot of them are common and we don't think much of it. We're at a special time. Yeah. We it, really are. It's like a beautiful sunset right before it goes dark. It's like, yes. enjoy it because you might not wake up. It's part of the reason why I'm considering swapping out the Tesla for this. Because like I'll have my whole life to drive in electric cars a daily. Mm. But, dude, there, there are states that are, you know, banning internal combustion. And there's only so much dino juice left. So, mm. might as well. We can make it. We can make it. Yeah. yeah. Some states are banning gasoline cars. Yeah. And like that could come to us one day. Yeah. And then I, I feel like I would look back and be like, why did I drive that Tesla when I could have been driving this? Or your Grand National. Or, or my Grand National. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> that's the justification, right? Drive the good cars while you can. Yeah. Because you might. It's so like this might just be end up being like a showpiece. You know, like you're just yeah. like, that's what cars used to be like, but we can't run those anymore. Back in my day, we could drive those every day. <laughs> Gas is $45 a gallon of taxes, so they just force you off the road. What? It's like an iRobot, you know, and he says, oh, this that thing runs on gas. He's like, oh, yeah, it's vintage. We're in that time before mm -hmm. the iRobots take over. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're done fixing this thing mechanically. So, yeah, next time we drive this is tomorrow for 800 miles. Okay, great. Yay! <laughs> All right, wizard. We are going to be hitting the road tomorrow morning. Oh. And hang on, okay. I brought you a present. All right, I like presents. You get an official, legit street cars t-shirt. Oh, right. Thank there you. There you go. Let's see if it, what it La looks like. Last time I was here, I didn't have these yet. So there, there you are, Very sir. cool, I appreciate yes, that. Yes, thank you for keeping the car for me. Yep, no problem. And I'll uh, shoot you a text and let you know how this all goes. Yep, let me know. I'm crossing my fingers you make it home. I think last time you, you thought I'd make it home in the CL, but you weren't sure. This one, it's, it's got to be more confidence in this one, right? Yeah, I think there is yeah. one more. Okay, good. Wizards bless this car, so. No, no, no. Wizards cast a spell on it. It's oh. A wizard. <laughs> oh, I'm not a priest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You must be the priest. That's All right. right, wizard has cast a spell on the car, but a good, charm. good it's charm, charm yeah. spell wizard. Yes. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> so this station wagon has a G meter and a lap timer. And it does this. All right, guys, it's early the next morning. This thing has remote start. Let's see if it works. Oh, it works. Cold start. All right, we're about to uh, head over to the gas station. This thing gets horrendous fuel economy. It's 14 and 19. I mean, that's like pickup truck fuel economy. I would have thought. It would do better on the highway, but I don't know. We'll see what it does in the real world, though. Gas is so cheap out here. It's like almost a dollar cheaper than Chicago. But they only have 91. Peter, they only have 95 Ron. 95 Ron? What? Yeah. It's terrible. I'm a much bigger fan of 98 Ron. Ron's a great fellow. He's a British fellow. Luckily, the CTS V is okay with 95 Rons. I like Max's and, and Peter's. Alex's. He's all right. Not great. Not great. <laughs> He's not great. <laughs> Guys, look at the color of this car. This is definitely one of the main reasons I wanted this particular wagon. I had never seen one in this color in person, but I knew it existed, and I knew it was the color for me. Now, obviously, we have you know some multiple color things going on here in the sun you can really tell i don't think the quarter panel well no then it disappears yeah, it looks darker but now it looks totally fine head on i don't know i don't know maybe the match isn't that bad no it's bad it's bad i think these handles are the original i don't know what's going on guys paint paint experts in the comment section it's just not painted properly on this side right i gotta i gotta probably redo that if i want it to be perfect um and i do think i'm gonna get new headlight lenses this one looks to be much newer 
than this one. It kind of just gives it away that this was in an accident. Um, and I believe that they painted this. Um, so I think it's plasti dipped. You think it's plasti dipped? Like, look at the look at the on the bottom for sure. Like oh, it's definitely plasti dipped. I, I'm oops, not. A, I, oops, I think I rather just have it be chrome. So I don't know. We're gonna do some stuff. We might. I don't know. This the stance is is pretty good in the front. We might go a little bit more low in the rear. Um, and then I got to repaint the brake calipers, get the windows tinted. But this wagon lowered with tints and all detailed up. Man, this is going to be a good looking car. This is the CTS V key, but it doesn't have push button. It's got turn fake key, which has always been a little weird. Like I said, we had a 2008 six cylinder one, same deal. But it's like, this doesn't come out or anything. It could have just been a button. But whatever, we have a full tank of gas. We have a factory boost gauge. We have a G meter that I'll admit I'm, I'm not using at all. We have 30, 29 PSI of hot oil pressure. That's perfect. Trans temp 113, battery voltage 14.4. What else do we need, people? Nothing, my life is complete. Except I wish I had a panoramic sunroof, I, I'll admit it. You yeah. had an Equinox. Yeah, Max <laughs> just got an Equinox and now he's all high and mighty. He has remote start, a power hatch, panoramic sunroof. What else? Uh, it's got heated seats. Heated seats. Uh, my driver heated seat does not work. It pretends oh, to work. Not? Now watch, hold on, it'll go away. Yep, it's gone. Oh, this one works really Yeah, well. that one works. All right, there you go. Did Max. you want me to just consolidate to two bars so we don't waste? You know what, Max, because MPGs. of your Equinox comments, you're only getting <laughs> one bar of heated seat. <laughs> All right, guys, we got gas. Max has human gas. This is basically poison, but it's delicious. Yeah. Peter's been gassing the hotel room out all night and the car. <laughs> Yeah, they don't have a roach problem anymore, that's for sure. Yeah, we killed them all. I got my coffee. We are getting on the highway. And right now I'm just kind of like pretending I woke up and I'm going to work um, because this could be my new daily driver. So I just want to get a good feel for it, see if I like it, if it's comfortable, you know, and all that good stuff. I'm used to the Tesla with autopilot and all these features everywhere. And this thing kind of doesn't have anything. And it's a 2011. I thought it was a 2012. Um, but then I realized it didn't have the lane departure warning, which came standard in 2012, or standard Bluetooth. It doesn't have that either. This car has nothing. This is like as base model as a CTS-V can get, zero options. It's like whoever bought this wanted like the lightest possible version. I, I, I don't know. I would have optioned it out personally. It's like going to work, but you picked up two idiots on yeah. the way, and then you're stuck in the car with them for the, the yeah. next 10 hours. This is what we do, we carpool. So I, I pick these guys up from from daycare, <laughs> and then we all go to work together. Yay! Not that this is like a difficult car to drive or anything like that, but it's just a little bit more involved than driving the Tesla. That thing's like always on autopilot, and you're kind of it just gets a little boring after a while. And this thing is just the complete opposite. Let's see. Now we got some fresh gas in here, so we should probably run out the old gas from the fuel lines and the rail. We should get that out of the system. You know what that means? Sustained high speed runs. Exactly. At the speed limit. <laughs> we set the speed limiter to 55. <laughs> All right, as soon as we get out of this turn. Oh, hold on, let's do my pedal buttons. There we go. <laughs> oh, 70. That's crazy. We got all the way up to 70. I'm a madman. I know. While we stopped for gas, I already researched the E85 kit, bigger fuel pumps and injectors. That's pretty much all this car needs. It has every other bolt on. It just needs E85 for the environment because it burns cleaner, you know, and that's what I'm going for. So it's it basically just runs on corn, right? Yeah. It's would a it, vegetarian. Does it say would the car be a vegetarian? Yes, yeah. it would be. Cruise control set. I'm daily driving basically a Prius. It's a Prius. Average economy, 16.4. And what was uh, it when you checked it before? Like 16.7. Was it? And we've we've driven like 80 miles, so this is about it. This is some real, this is horrible gas. Like, my wife's Escalade gets better fuel economy oh than gosh. this thing. What does hers do? She's got like, an eight speed train, I mean, it gets though, a, right? She's got an eight speed. It gets about the same, but like still, that's an Escalade, an all wheel yeah, drive. It's like two times the amount of metal. Right. This. And it's supercharged and has Almost actually the about the same crank the horsepower. Same horsepower. Yeah, the Escalade's got about 640. This did 550 wheels, so it's probably, probably just a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. So you basically have the ideal his and hers Cadillac combo. Ooh, yeah. Should I get those plates? You should. Yeah. <laughs> you should. I would like it to get better fuel economy. 
think it's uh do we know anybody who can do that i did make a 40 mpg eco vet so why don't you make a 40 mpg eco right. eco eco v eco yeah eco v a, v a veto eco eco all right so we just looked this up the first one just turns off traction control so in a straight line you could rip burnouts and all that kind of good stuff uh, and then competitive mode turns off the stabila controller the the stabila track so it turns off like your yaw rate sensors and all that kind of good stuff so when you're going around a track you basically have no aids or next to no aids I mean, it's kind of unclear on the internet uh, but it's going to let you kind of get more squirrely around turns it's not going to kick in and start applying the brakes uh, when you're braking traction in a turn so basically it's in nurburgring mode that's that's what that is because this was the fastest sedan around that track in 2009. Do you hear that, BMW and AMG guys? Wait, am I an AMG? I'm an AMG guy. You're an AMG guy. Are you hearing AMG. yourself? Well, but now you're also a Cadillac CTSV guy. Yeah, I am. I don't know who I am anymore. You're also a DSM guy. Yeah, and a Mustang guy. And a Mustang, guy. Mustang and a guy. guy. And a 15 passenger van guy. Mostly a 15 passenger van, van guy, I think really. we all identify as yeah. 15 passenger van guys. Yeah. Are there any guys that don't identify as 15 passenger van guys? Well, Does any? Does anyone else out there have a love for gigantic vans? Like, I don't know what it is about it, but I love my 15 passenger van. More than pretty much every other vehicle you own. I don't know why. And, and I don't even have a personal connection with the van. Like Peter and I were talking about this last night while I was destroying everybody at Top Golf. Here's the proof. <gasps> Like we've taken one road trip in that van and then we basically never used it again. We're gonna fix it and it's gonna be awesome. We have a pro charger on the way and we have headers for it and all sorts of stuff, but I love that van. And I have a transmission and torque converter that costs double the cost of the actual van. <laughs> and then the pro charger kit also costs double the cost of the van. Like if this van ever got stolen by like just a normal thief that goes around stealing vans that look like construction work vans, they would like steal this thing and get a really awesome surprise. Don't steal my van. Max is editing because that's what he does. Um, <laughs> this is probably the first time he's edited in a while. He just sits in the in the, I, I in the editing suite. Hire somebody and, to edit for me. Yeah, and uh, and, and now and I'm driving because that's my job. I'm the driver and the mechanic. Alex does nothing. He's just really he's, phone, like, he's just really pretty. Yeah, it's like driving Miss Daisy. Hey, drive this. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, this feels a lot faster when you're not like ready for it at all. <laughs> it's like deep in thought, Peter. <laughs> what were you guys talking about before that just happened? Uh, we were just talking trash. Oh, much. like were you talking about doing that? And I wasn't even listening. <laughs> yeah, yep. I yep, get yep. in the zone, all right? <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude, this thing is fast. It's good, right? <laughs> my kids are gonna love this back seat. It's so nice and comfortable. Ooh, this seat has a rip in it, so it needs Recaro's. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> I, had, I had to pass, I had to pass the, Oh, the okay, truck. that makes sense. It was a safety, a safety concern. <laughs> This thing is frightening, but it's not really. It's like it's so quiet when you're just driving. It's like a stock car. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, Ugh. I had to wait till you were looking down. <laughs> Max is editing. I'm yeah, email. I'm trying to edit. I'm trying to edit. I'm trying to email about five thousand people, and Peter's just beating on the wagon. <laughs> Work. I'm working too. I'm driving. <laughs> well, what is this? The time is right to sell your collector car, and I'm not just saying that because you can join me, Tyler Hoover, when I sell some of my collection. <laughs> is that one of his <laughs> lines? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is Barrett Jackson stuff. Hey, oh, can, can you read it like you're Tyler Hoover? I mean, oh. not do an impression, but like, no, no, do an cheese it up, cheese yeah. it up. Do an impression. The time yeah. is right to sell your car. <laughs> He's got no really idea. high energy. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, is that oh yeah, he's like kind of chirpy and like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so Dr. Quick, yeah. The time is right to sell your car. And I'm not just saying that because you could join me. Tyler Hoover. I... <laughs> Sorry, Tyler, that's horrible. That is horrible. Um, we don't pay him for his acting skills, yeah, that's I am for a sure. horrible actor. But I do like to look at receipts here. We have a dealership receipt. I guess uh, Hoovy took it in. This... Yeah, he took it to the dealer, a GM dealer for an oil change. And I love the fact that they still call this a lube oil and filter. 
that is from like the old days where there were Zerk fittings everywhere and things were actually lubricated. And they still include that in the description. It says like the oil change filter and then lubricate suspension. There's absolutely nothing on this suspension that could be lubricated at all. Um, Multi-point inspection, cracked rim on the inside. Um, and then everything is a green light. Green light? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Red light! If you're wondering why you're getting 16 miles per gallon, it's because Peter's done that eight times in the last 12 months. Oh my gosh. Oh, we found a uh, receipt for $470. Oh, it's not an Acura for Peter. Oh, that's me, yeah. <laughs> that's that's <you>. mine. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, we stopped to get gas. Uh, I have no idea where we are, but I do know that there is a single gas pump. Well, there's one for diesel over there, but are we, did we transport ourselves back in time? This is from 1983. Like, this is awesome. Like, I'm excited to see what kind of, they could probably get like biscuit and grits, like homemade, they're, they're probably just waiting. Making, they're making beef jerky in there right now. All right, let's get gas. I don't know if I want to beat on the car after we get this 91 octane in the middle of nowhere, but uh, yeah. All right, guys, I'll just, I'll fill up. Go ahead and do your thing. I'll be fine. All right, thanks. Thanks, guys. Even pay with a credit card out here. Wait, it says, oh, I gotta go in. The store is awesome. They have boots in here. They have everything. Groceries, boots. Peter? Yes. That's all you, dude. I'm gonna have one American boot and one Japan boot. Yes. yes! You're not gonna find that here, though. <laughs> Best store ever. You pump first and then you pay what? they trust us no way <laughs> I, I i didn't even know what to do i've i haven't seen that since i was a child this is the best store guys you gotta check what, what state are we even in all right here we go getting gas you Dude, walk out they, of there with our food they trusted us oh my gosh they said he said he saved the sale so you're gonna pump your stuff yeah and then he's gonna add it and right I, like, I said I, I literally said i will wait here with the food till he gets back in so you know he's gonna pay for it. He's like, oh no, you're good. Oh my God. Like, Look at this, this is a whole nother side of the store. It's got everything. Everything you could ever need is here. And they're so nice. I don't know what to do. Beard wash, cargo pants, Tide, and ice cream all within a few feet of each other. What's in here? And speakers and wallets. And, and fancy clothes. Wow, it's $189. And we can get beef jerky on the other side. Wait till you guys see the sandwiches we just bought. All right guys, I rarely take you into bathrooms in my videos. I've done this once when we got the van from North Dakota, but I got it. I mean, look at this beautiful wood bathroom. I mean, it smells so good. Oh wait, this is totally fake. This is like wallpaper. Okay, it still smells really, really good. I love this place. I gotta show you what their deli selection is like here. There's a sign that says, pick one meat and one cheese equals $2. They just have mustard and mayo, no real options, and you get it on like Wonder Bread, like white Wonder Bread. It's like your mom made you a sandwich for school. I mean, I'm moving. I'm moving, where are we? Missouri, but Williamsburg, Missouri. Missouri. Williamsburg, Missouri. This is where I wanna be, folks, with my CTSV wagon. All right, so I picked up some maple, Bacon flavored chips, Uncle Ray's. Wait, what? Not, not for sale in California. Okay, some would say that's how you know it's the good stuff. <laughs> Why isn't this for sale in California? What is in this? It has a definition of self-control on the back of this bag: rejecting wrong desires and doing what's right, setting your own limits, refusing to equate desires with rights. What in the world? I have no idea what's going on right now, but I'm about to submit to some desires of eating chips that taste like waffles and syrup and bacon. I'm sorry people in California, or maybe I'm not. Let's see what these taste like. Oh man, I'm sorry. Are they good? Dude, dude, you guys, were you ever into uh, Eggos with mm -hmm. maple syrup on them? It's, oh my God. Yes. That's so good. Whoa. That is so wow, good. yeah. Are you serious? That's amazing. No, you can't. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> These chips are so good. Should we go run in and get another bag? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Get another bag. These sandwiches are so good too. It was only two dollars. I like that they had a deli behind the cashier, mm -hmm. and they fr they freshly sliced all of this at the 
gas station. Yeah, we're having some food before we get to editing in the back seat. So Peter's going to drive us around like a chauffeur while we sit back here and watch a video that comes out before this video comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like Inception. It was weird. Should we call him Jeeves? Jeeves. Yeah, Peter will be our Jeeves while we sit back here and do more important things than driving. Only peasants drive vehicles. Hey guys, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen on the back of a potato chip bag. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you can pause the video right now and read it for yourself. This is, I don't know what's going on here. CTSV Recaro seats, 2000 bucks. These look pretty nice. Hey, we're in Illinois! Oh, Yay. I can feel the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything just got more expensive. Yeah. old men who loses their hearing up top. Well, I was bored with the birth defect, but thanks, Peter. Wait, which one? Your face? <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> Peter, it's a red Ferrari. That's a Miata. Oh yeah, it might be a Miata. Yeah, we beat him. Racer, racer flyby. See ya. Oh, this wow. thing is so fast. <laughs> okay, we just drove 12 hours right to a polling voting station. Uh, I had three minutes left to vote for the mayor of Chicago, and they gave me a little sticker. So I'm gonna be one of those guys that does. No, I'm not gonna do that. I don't like the, the I voted thing. It's like just vote and just that's it. You did it, as I tell everybody that I voted. <laughs> I walked in and they're like, "Do you, are you in this precinct? And I'm like, I yes. And they're like, you're late. I'm like, I just got in from Kansas. And I'm like, I'm not from Kansas, I'm from here. I can vote. And so they're like, okay, you get the last ballot. So I did it and we made it, by the way. We're back in Chicago, obviously. We made it with the CTSV wagon without a hitch. No lights on the dash. Uh, Max and I, Got a ton of work done in the back seat here. Peter didn't like, get any speeding Peter tickets. got no speeding tickets, <laughs> which was very surprising. Because he was doing the speed limit the entire doing, time. I, I don't know why it was surprising. Yeah, he was doing the speed limit. We ate a lot of awesome food at that one gas station. Two dollar sandwiches. Two dollar sandwiches. You can't beat it. So, uh, well, yeah, we're gonna be uh, bringing this back to legit street cars in the morning after getting some sleep. So I will see you there. All right, guys, hang on. Before we end the scene here, I just gotta, I gotta show you the get the Cadillac collection we have going on here. Two supercharged, roughly 650 horsepower a piece family vehicles. This could be my daily driver. That's my wife's daily driver. I don't know. That's pretty cool. I, I might have to do this. And I know I've already talked about this, but they literally get the same gas mileage, which is ridiculous. Let's just talk about stock form. That one I think is rated at 20, 19 or 20 MPG, and that one's rated at 19 on the highway. That makes zero sense. I don't I don't agree with it, <laughs> but it's true. What did we got? Exactly, Max 18? I got exactly 18, and I was really, I was babying it for yeah. most of that. And it's not, it can't be the tune. It's in closed loop. It's running at 14.7 to one air fuel. I mean, one Lambda. It's one Lambda. I should check though. It might, maybe it's out of closed loop and that would do it. But no, but whatever. They get 19 from the factory. That's horrible. All right, guys. So we made it back to legit three quarters in the CTS V wagon without a hitch. There were basically no issues other than having to refill the tire uh, just a couple of times. It went a little low and then overnight it does lose quite a bit, like 10 PSI. So we have to get the crack fixed on the wheel, but mechanically this thing is flawless. I mean, there's just, it shifts perfectly, no lights, no nothing. Um, it's awesome. And it's a little bit too awesome because it has me seriously thinking of getting rid of this my dream spec P100D Tesla. So I don't know what to do. I'm so conflicted right now. I'm a little worried to check the comments right now because I think you guys are all gonna say, just dump this Tesla, get rid of it. But I have been into electric cars for a long time as a daily driver. I think they serve a really good purpose for that. We just washed this thing up. So I have them side by side. I'll show you kind of a little bit of comparison here and there, but uh, this has been such a nice daily driver, but I really like this car too. So I had looked for a blue P100D 
in this exact spec, black interior with the $15,000 full self-driving option. This has that ludicrous plus. Uh, I had the wheels done in black chrome, so that's done. It's got the big red brake calipers. This has the heated and cooled seats, and this glass roof actually goes back. Then they went to a fixed roof. We did some carbon fiber uh, PPF, and half the car is wrapped in the clear PPF as well. I just, I really love this car. I really do, but man, would I really like to drive that red wagon. Just look at it, it's so cool. So anyway, a couple comparisons here. Uh, I really like the glass roof on this car. That has no glass roof whatsoever. Um, although it does look kind of cool without anything on the roof, especially in that red color. I did this cool carbon fiber spoiler on here, and then we wrapped this in carbon fiber with the factory Tesla Rays LSC EV. It's got factory moisture inside of the tail lamps. I mean, come on. But as far as a daily driver for the family and everything, it's a little dirty in here, but a very nice big back seat. Again, it's dirty, but super comfy front seats, a gigantic screen, a phenomenal stereo. I had that updated as well. So it's the latest and greatest Tesla screen. So they replace uh, that and the cluster. That's all done. Everything's done. It's a hatchback. So there is a ton of room back here, just in case you need to haul around your 80s and 90s baseball card collection, or your long tube headers, or your 3500 Chevy Express van, normal things to be carrying around. So as much as I can say a wagon is a perfect daily driver because of all the room back here, uh, it's, it's not that much different. Yeah, I don't know which one has more room. Maybe the Tesla? I don't know, or they're equal. Uh, these seats go down so we can lay a bunch of stuff in here, but I would say they're basically equal as far as interior cargo space and also the whole back seat area actually might be a little bigger on the Tesla because it doesn't have the little transmission hump right there. And then obviously the tech inside of this car is basically non-existent uh, compared to the Tesla. This doesn't have like lane departure warning. It doesn't even have factory Bluetooth. So yeah, it's more kind of just a, a raw car, but I, but I love it. I, I love the interior. I would get the optional Recaro seats because they'll bolt right in. They would also then be cooled. Uh, and then I found some companies that sell a kit that will turn that radio into a more modern one. So I'll have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, and all that stuff. So I don't know, what else do you need? Bluetooth, Android Auto. It'll have more modern navigation because it'll have Google Maps then at that point. So yeah, it doesn't have full self-driving, but, but it sounds so good. Now, as far as performance goes, the Tesla will kill this thing zero to 60. Um, but this would murder it on the highway. The Tesla is kind of slow after 60, 70 miles an hour. Uh, and this thing is not slow at all. And I would make it faster, of course. This thing has the ported blower. It has Cook's headers. Uh, it's got all the bolt-ons I would do to a wagon, except it's not on E85. So if I do the dual pumps and bigger injectors uh, and do like a flex fuel kit, will be probably 600, six and a quarter to the tires. So this thing will just be an absolute monster with zero sacrifice. It'll be a very legit street car. It doesn't even have a cam in it or anything. It's got factory mufflers. Uh, so, you know, I can go pick up the kids. My wife could borrow this without really knowing what's going on, that it's some kind of radical, crazy car. And it just looks so cool. And I've always wanted one. So let me know in the comments, do I dump the Tesla? for the CTS V wagon. You guys are gonna find out in the next video because I'm gonna open that one up with my decision on what I'm doing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little adventure of ours cruising back from Kansas uh, yet again. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends and your family and loved ones and anyone else that you want to pass along the gift of of cool car videos. Subscribe, Peter just told me to tell you guys to subscribe. So subscribe to the channel and most importantly, have a great day. I'll see all of you in the next one. You can live in a house. No. That's so bad. Yeah. Because the pink and have unicorns on it. Oh, that's mine. Oh, this is way bigger than I thought. I don't know what I was thinking there. She said, oh. All right, you guys know the rules. Okay, don't be weak. <laughs> That's the first rule. You need a breaker bar? Yeah, I need more leverage. It's because he's weak. Alex. I'm weak, all right? Like I said earlier, he's just really weak. Not more than 10 foot pounds. I That's hear that. whispering. It's not good. <laughs> and Alex is exceptionally weak. He's just incredibly weak. I think you might have, a, what's that called when your bones degenerate? You have like bone loss? Hey. I'm literally like, <laughs> I'm here in the conversation. <laughs> Some gas and get that going. All right, so, all right. Ah, it's enough. <laughs> Off. But then it'll move around.
might make Mom's noise. gonna move around. So I bet. I bet. Makes it better. Oh, traffic circle. Where are we? Indiana? <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you. I'm going to put this in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> and people aren't going to believe it. <laughs>